This episode of Pride is brought to you by AT&T. AT&T supports organizations that strengthen the LGBTQ plus community. AT&T and The Trevor Project share a commitment to bringing an end to LGBTQ youth suicide. Oh gosh. <laughs> I remember my memory kind of starts standing backstage, like on the side stage and seeing, I was there with my, my manager, who my former manager, not in a bad way at all. She had a baby and she left and I'm like, get out of here. This, <laughs> this place is crazy. Um, and so being there with her is also just this wonderful thing. Um, and one of my best friends in the world was helping with the string quartet. And so being surrounded by two of the people closest to me, side stage, in my rainbow shirt, holding the mic, and seeing Zed, like playing his last song, and realizing I'm about to go, you know, peeking out to the, to the crowd and realizing I'm about to walk on, like, not even just on the stage, but like down the runway, like down to like the middle of the, the pit, basically. Um, I mean, my legs were shaking, and I just had that feeling of, which I often get, where you're not crying yet, but like there are tears coming out of your eyes. And you, I kind of like open my eyes really wide, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then just, yes, 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 yes. And I just started like full crying. I'm like hugging my manager and he finishes his set. And I just like am turning the corner and just looking around it all almost looks fake because you can't even compute in your head that there's this many people all the way up to the nosebleeds, just people, real human people. And I have a hard time seeing a crowd and taking it as just a crowd. A lot of times I'm looking and realizing you're a person, you're a person, you're a person, you're a person. And when you're doing that like tens of thousands of times, it's very overwhelming. Um, and yeah, I was in a full crying, you know, mini meltdown before the first chord was hit. And when you played it and all of those people reacted, what, like, were you just like, here we go? It, every single time I, I, almost every single time I get on a stage, I am so overwhelmed and if and if anyone listening has been to my shows you almost guaranteed you've seen me cry like a full cry like not like a cute like oh sorry i'm just getting a little emotional but like oh no i'm sobbing now because and and i for me i think it goes back to the feeling of not being alone and the feeling of i try to carry myself wherever i go I try to carry whatever I am, whatever I've in the past, my hopes for the future and, and right now, wherever I go. And so when I'm playing a show, I have that little kid with me that felt like, I remember when I was in, I don't know, second grade or something, we had to describe ourselves as one adjective. And I wrote unlovable and they like called my parents and they're like, what's going on? And I don't even know that I knew what that meant, but I, but I've carried that kind of sense of, and I think a lot of queer people that I know have had this, some version of that, of feeling so outside of, um, and so unacceptable, and so um, unnatural. Um, and especially when that's given the voice of God, which I think is like one of the truest evils in the world, um, that really goes deep into into a, a person's soul, really. Um, and so every time I go out on stage, I am always kind of, not even kind of, I'm always so overwhelmed by like something that I just did and now people are clapping or people are crying or people are smiling or people are holding hands with someone or people are reacting and having this emotional response. I get that back like that for me is such a mutual thing and I try to bring that to every show I play 
Um, so just like all caps, bold, underlined, overwhelming. That's what that feels like to me. Church can be a very powerful community, so losing it can make a huge impact on a person's life. Excommunicated means to be kicked out of your church. Churches can decide to banish someone because of illegal activity, physical abuse, or abandonment. To the church, someone who has been excommunicated has committed a grave offense that caused this person to be separated spiritually from the church. For Stephen Rabel, it was because he's gay. He was kicked out and left with no community, no faith, all because he loved another man. But Rabel didn't let it end there. He fought to find a new community and in doing so, built an amazing life full of love and music. Stephen Rabel, known as Rabel, is a musician, a singer, and a songwriter. Pop icon Pink once called him one of the greatest singers and songwriters alive today. His songwriting credits include releases by Pink, Kesha, Lewis Tomlinson, The Backstreet Boys, and Marshmallow. Today, Rabel is here to share how he found his own path and how he came to discover that pride isn't a day, it isn't a month, Pride is life. I am Rabel and this is Pride. Before Rabel was moving from one songwriting job to the next, he was moving from one state to the next. I was born in Long Island. Um, I always joke that I was born into a U-Haul because we moved immediately. Um, and we moved, I think in my, like, before I made it to LA, I think we moved 15 times. Um, and that's excluding, like, within the same city moving, you know, from an apartment to a condo to a house, back to a condo, back to the, whatever. So we were always on the go. Um, I grew up, my biggest kind of chunks of time were in Northern California and Houston, Texas. As a child, Rabel says he was a monster. He would throw tantrums and occasionally shoes. I got these shoes that I wanted and then I was wearing them in the mall and I started crying and screaming and like threw the shoe like across the mall. My parents were like, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> did they like, how did they react to that? They were just like, okay, I guess we need different shoes. Yeah, kind of, they, they were good sports. Rabel has never had a good relationship with shoes, and that continues to this day. I don't know my shoe size. So anytime I buy shoes, it's like th three sizes. Let me try them on. Like right now, if I was like, hey, I have a pair of shoes to send you, you'd be like, great, send a nine, a 10, an 11, and a 14. Pretty much. I'd be like nine, nine and a half, 10, 10 and a half. Well, I mean, there's a little variation. Shoes fit differently. I guess so. Like me, he was a kid who enjoyed sleepovers until it came time to actually go to sleep. Then he would call his parents and demand someone come and pick him up. And if he didn't want to go to school, he had a plan for that too. And I would like leave my shoes at home so that when I get dropped off at school, I could be like, oh, I can't go. And they're like, what do you mean? It's like, oh, I don't have my shoes. Yes, many of his stories as a kid revolve around shoes. So I was kind of like, you know, a bit of like an oddball. This may surprise you, but when Rabel wasn't throwing shoe tantrums, he was running away from piano lessons. So I started taking piano lessons when I was like a kid kid. I don't know. I have no sense of time, but like a kid, like whatever age a kid usually is sent into music lessons. I did that and I absolutely hated it. Hated it, hated it, hated it, would cry, would call my mom, pick me up, would leave my shoes the whole bit. I don't remember being super creative, you know, within like making stuff. I think I've always had some sort of, my head has always been a bit in the clouds. Rabel wouldn't fall in love with music until he was 16 years old. But when he did finally fall, he fell hard. I had heard a record by this guy called Aqualung. The record's called Strange and Beautiful, and I bought it at Borders Books. And I bought it based on the cover. It was like this sensitive looking British man, like on a beach and it was overcast. And I was like, ooh, cool, I want that. And I bought it and I, it's one of those moments that you kind of, I remember, I can smell the moment, I can see the moment, I can feel the moment. It was, I was in this car, my best friend was in the backseat, 
her mom was in the passenger seat because I only had my permit. And it was on a road called Westheimer in Houston. And there's a Shipley's Donuts in the little parking lot, like a little hut version of that. Um, and as soon as I heard that record, it kind of was like the light bulb moment of like, I want to do that. Whatever is going on here, this is what I want to do. So he gave piano lessons another try. And this time he didn't leave his shoes at home on purpose. He took lessons through the worship leader at his local church. And soon he was writing his first song. And dude, I found a lyric sheet the other day and I want to like frame it because it's typed out like so official. And at the bottom it says copyright, like whatever year, 2006 or whatever, like Stephen Rabel music, LLC, like a made up an LLC, like <laughs> that's not real. <laughs> but I guess I had Googled like, how do I make sure no one steals this? Because now someone's going to steal it. And Rabel didn't stop at the piano. I started doing show choir. Um musical theater, uh, jazz, piano, jazz voice, uh, anything to try and find, you know, what do I really want to do and what am I good at? He discovered that playing music was fun, but what he really wanted to do was create his own music. And that's where I kind of started, like you said, really falling in love with, with not just music, but with creating. And when it came to creating, that's kind of what really like turned me on creatively was that you could sit at a piano and I still to this day don't know where things come it's just like stuff some days it just doesn't happen and sometimes something just comes out of your face where you're like where on earth did that just come from and I just think it's such a magnificent magical thing to with any create, you know, I talk to people that are graphic artists or, and, and it, I find it's a similar kind of thing. There's different types of creating. I think some people do from like a craft and from a, but for that floaty muse thing, it's that really like gets me going every time still to this day. I'm like, where on days where it's not there, I'm like, where did you go? How could you forsake me? <laughs> and on days where it's there, I'm just like, what on, like, where are you? And how do I, <laughs> will you stay, please? At this point in his songwriting career, Rabel is still pretty young. So where is he pulling inspiration from in order to create these songs? The first song that I just referenced with the lyric sheet was about, like completely about unrequited love. I tend to gravitate towards unrequited love in my writing and I and I have wondered before even looking back to like my first song that I wrote like was I subconsciously even tapping into like starting to realize like oh I'm gay and like I have a crush on you know so and so and they definitely don't have a crush on me and I, I often wonder like was I tapping into some weird thing that I didn't even you know, necessarily have the words for or have the emotional maturity to, you know, put on the table and look at. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of writing about kind of nothing and kind of just following whatever was coming out of my mouth. When it comes to processing feelings and emotions, Rabel says it's easier to put all his thoughts into a song rather than talk it out with his family or friends almost easier for me sometimes to be like well here's a song and then people are like are you okay <laughs> and i'm like I don't, now i am i think it's like some sort of like therapy to get through it right like totally like when you put it out to the world you're telling someone and then yeah they can react to that and kind of help you i, I suppose navigate whatever things you're dealing with in life yeah and that's i, I appreciate you saying that because that, that's for me like very very true and i think the coolest thing for me, and maybe if I, I don't have a you know, big mission statement or whatever, but if I did, it would be something about wanting to make people feel like they're not alone in whatever they're going through and whoever they are. Um, and in doing that, there is this kind of, I guess it's not selfish, but almost selfish way of, of me doing that as well. Because if I release the song and some, one person connects to it, then I'm like, oh, thank God, I'm not alone either. Like, there's this kind of mutual thing. And, and that's really what has kept me 
you know, there's been times in the past, oh my God, 10 years of this, I guess, career that I, that I have that I've, you know, been close to throwing in the towel and, and, you know, it's not, there's so much up and down. Um, but the one thing that has always been constant and I've always just floored me every single time, every single time I play a show, every single time I put out a song, the thing that floors me the most is when a stranger somehow hears something and somehow connects to something on that heart, gut, human level. That to me is miraculous every single time. And I hope no matter how many things I do or how many shows I play or whatever, I, and I hope, I don't think that that will ever stop surprising me and just lowering me. When we come back, excommunication and a long-awaited debut album. This episode of Pride is brought to you by AT&T. AT&T supports organizations that strengthen the LGBTQ plus community. AT&T and The Trevor Project share a commitment to bringing an end to LGBTQ plus youth suicide. Here's a way that you can help support The Trevor Project with AT&T. Every time you post on Instagram or Twitter, use hashtag turn up the love. AT&T will donate $10 to The Trevor Project up to 125,000. So start using the hashtag turn up the love today and let's help The Trevor Project with AT&T. Since 1975, AT&T has been a proud ally to the LGBTQ plus community. AT&T Turn Up the Love is an events advocacy and editorial initiative to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community and to promote acceptance and allyship. AT&T celebrates the pride in you by offering meaningful ways to have a positive impact for the LGBTQ plus community. Discover exclusive content, contests, and events at turnuptheLove.com. Welcome back. Today we're talking to Rabel, an American singer and songwriter. He's collaborated with artists like Ellie Goulding and Adam Lambert, and has an album coming out later this year. Before the break, Rabel shared how important music is for expression and for working through difficult emotions. But sometimes, the best feelings come from performing live. Rabel's most memorable moment in his career was singing The Village at the Love Loud Festival. I mean, that with like a string quartet and like, It was just surreal. And I remember like I was, I, was, I was crying before the song even started. Like just walking out on that stage and seeing that many people. And like the spot that I was given between like Zed and Imagine Dragons, they're like, oh, this is when you're playing. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, are you sure? Like did somebody mess up? <laughs> Love Loud is a foundation and festival created by Dan Reynolds and powered by AT&T. It aims to bring communities together to talk about what it means to love LGBTQIA youth unconditionally. Seeing all these kids and their parents there to just kind of back to that thing of you're not alone. Like when you fill up an entire stadium with, with people that have felt outside of or felt other or felt evil or felt wrong or dirty and and their parents who are trying to just help navigate like i don't know what to do but here we are because this seems like a good thing in the context of all of that getting to perform that song in that way at that night as the sun went down like that was just one of the most magical i still have the shirt i saved the shirt um that i was wearing um just to kind of never forget what that like. It's important for people young and old to feel like they have a space where they belong. Again, it's miraculous and it's so, I think, important to have, to leave space for those moments and something like Love Loud where it's just, it's a whole entire festival of that. <laughs> like, how cool is that? As I was like, Pride Month, it's like Pride Month is every, every month, every day is Pride Month. <laughs> like, every life, it's Pride Life. Like, I, I just think it's really important to to grab a hand around you and, 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 you know, I think it's a lifelong thing of just like constantly coming out, constantly learning about ourselves and constantly looking around us and celebrating and lifting up. And that's one thing I do 
love and, and really feel and see in Pride Month is, is people lifting each other up and, and whether it's even something as simple as making a playlist. Like, here's a bunch of queer artists that are awesome. Even something like that, like, that's so cool. Like, yeah, like, you know, lift it up, shine. Any spot, anybody got a spotlight, like shine it all around because there's so much goodness out there. Um, and I think it really helps people. It helps me. For Ravel, this moment had even more meaning because of his dark history with his faith and with his church. Coming from a religious background and, and going through my own, you know, not Mormon, but you know, born again Christian, and I was kicked out of a church when I came out. And having that as such a big part of my coming out story and my life and, and knowing what the people in the state, like it just blows my mind getting to do stuff like that. Rabel was very involved with his church in Los Angeles, but like many members of the LGBTQIA plus community, that changed when he opened up about his sexuality. I met a boy that also went to the church who I think was out. They have this, this in hindsight, creepy thing where you are, they call it same sex attraction. They labeled being queer as a problem that could be overcome. Rabel says people were brainwashed into thinking conversion therapy was a beautiful journey. In hindsight, I'm like, how did I ever think, like, how did I ever applaud? Like, wow, you're like so righteous, like, and not, not ragging on him at all. It was primarily, there was this leader in the church who was, who was the poster, you know, person for um, being gay, but not acting because that's the real sin is the action. Um, and so I came out into, into that. I came out to that leader in the church um, in his apartment, listening to Kate Bush, this woman's work, chain smoking, parliaments, drinking an Arizona iced tea. And I thought I was going to die the next day. I called one of my best friends who, who made it out of the church with me. And she came over and was like, you're not going to die. Like, you're okay. Like, we'll figure this out. And it sent me on such a chase of meaning. Rabel began enforcing his own version of conversion therapy. He says he tried to pray the gay away and went to Bible study every other day, but he stopped when he fell in love with a boy. And the boy that I had met, we fell in love and we like held hands one time going on the entrance ramp to the 101. And I was like, if this God everybody's talking about is real, God is right here in our hands while we're holding hands for the first time driving, like this most innocent, beautiful moment. Rabel and the boy were both kicked out of the church and the impact this had on their lives was terrifying. I think a lot of times it's hard for people that have never been part of a church or that, that kind of culture to realize that your whole community is that. It becomes everything. And it's and when it's working or when they approve of you or when they think you're in the club, it's really amazing. You can there's people where, oh, so and so couldn't afford their rent this month. Let's all pool together money and help them. Or so and so is sick, let's go bring them all this stuff. Or so and so needs this, let's go do that. And and there is this beautiful community. So when that's completely taken away, it's it kind of amplifies that feeling of there's something wrong with me. I'm like disgusting, I guess, because they don't even want to like be around me. Like this disapproval and then the, the big old cherry on top is that it's all done through the voice of God who you've grown up and spent your whole life dreaming of this creator that makes the flowers that lean towards the sun and then every speck of sand on the beach and, and all this stuff. And when that, that power is given to this, whatever the phrase is, you're not welcome here. So he began searching for a new church that would celebrate and embrace him for who he was instead of tearing him down. And eventually he found it. We went for the first time and they had a trans person leading worship. And I was just like sobbing, like looking around this room and seeing all these people that have been through probably worse than 
than what we were and and all still searching for meaning for love for light for hope for community to anyone who's going through their own journey and is struggling to find their footing rabel has this to say i think it's just letting someone know that they're not alone um cuz i remember feeling alone i remember feeling like the only per- like i'm the only person in the entire universe who is realizing oh my gosh i'm gay oh no i can't be this where is it in me how what happened to me or what am i going to do and 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 it took me years to process through that and then after that it took me years to come to a place where now i have a rainbow arch painted in my apartment that i walk through every single day of my life um so i think whether whether it's just as simple as somebody who went through a breakup and they hear a song and they connect with it on that level or it's someone that's queer and feels like they're the only queer person in their house, their town, their country, the world. Those are such valid feelings because it really can feel like that and I just hope that something um connects and just lets someone, one person, <laughs> if one person is like, "Oh, I kind of I really do that." that's kind of enough for me to be like cool I'll keep going thank you you're like I have done my job I did it the actual lord's work <laughs> helping people right yeah and and connecting that human connection I think you know and coming out of the church and in kind of searching for for meaning of of life you know I think when you grow up with such a specific a uh, world view when you lose that or when you're you know actually forcefully removed from that it can be like well what's the well what's the point then and and i to me one of the biggest points like you know behind a on a banner behind a plane that's flying around the world at all times is like human connection it's just such a powerful beautiful thing we're all so incredibly different but i believe that we're all so incredibly the same and when you have those moments of that duality it's just like like that's awesome rabel has co-wrote songs for a slew of pop icons but he's about to go through a huge milestone in his own career it's wild because we've just started like really talking about this because it was just announced and it's crazy to me every time I say it but I've just announced my debut record um that's coming out September 24th called These Words Are All For You and this record just means so much to me it's something that I've been working on for 8 plus years um it's something that I thought would have come out a few times two or three times Rabel was signed to a record label called Island Def Jam in 2012. Here he put out a song with Dutch DJ Afrojack, and it was an international hit. He had an album in the works, but his label encouraged him to get music out faster by just releasing an EP. At that time it was that was an amazing problem. I was like, that's not a problem at all. Like something's happening. Um fast forward to my second record deal. We put out a song called 11 Blocks. It started picking up. scrap the album put out an EP and that time i was a little bit like oh wait a minute <laughs> and it's still like an amazing problem to have but but you know i had these songs that were haunting me quite literally um and i moved out here to be an artist i moved out here to release an album i love what an album does i love the room that an album holds i love that there's room for a 2 minute long song I love that there's room for a seven and a half minute long, <laughs> like ballad, the slowest song that you've ever heard, and I love that there's room for every color and every emotion and every kind of story. And so, I've been holding on to this hope and this dream for so since I landed here, really. Um, 
and through all my professional adventures. Rabel knew being an independent artist was a risk. He wouldn't have the support of a label to help his music get out into the world, but he knew he didn't want to keep producing music under the current circumstances. I didn't want someone else to be in control of my life, it feels like, my creativity. So he did the only thing he could think of. He started his own label. And so I made a record label called Big Gay Records. <laughs> Um, half as a joke, um, and we started just releasing songs, and in 2020, kind of when everything shut down, I um, partnered Big Gay with uh, a company called Network and got to talk with, with them about kind of what I wanted to do, and it was the first time I had a really candid conversation of being able to just say, like, this is what I... Not even what I want to do, but like, this is what I'm doing. With his new freedom, Rabel was able to focus on what he really wanted, to put out an album. I'm just so excited. We just got the mastered album like, like last week and, and listening to this body of work. And it's so much more hopeful than, than my first, I thought my first album was going to be a breakup album about like the first boy that broke my heart. Um, and it, and like, He's on there for sure, but um, I, I'm in many ways I feel like a different person now, and I've been sober, unsober, and back sober again since that first record was made, and I've traveled the world for the first time, and I've you know had a few relationships. I'm now in love, um, and I I'm so thankful in hindsight seeing everything that this is when it's happening and this is how it's happening. I was able to tell all the stories that I wanted to tell and the way I wanted to tell them. It sounds like me, it feels like me, the visuals look like me. I've gotten to work with some of my best friends um, and it's just been the coolest experience that I've kind of ever had as an artist to, to kind of be like, oh, oh, I, oh, I'm deciding all this stuff. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Um, but it feels so cathartic and so empowering to, to be like, oh, this is, this is mine. It, re it really is mine. His album, These Words Are All For You, will be released on September 24th of this year. But you can listen to his newest single from the album, Nothing But The Love, right now. To find out more about the album and future releases, follow Rabel. You can find me at, on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, it's at Rabel. Um, and on ravelmusic.com. Um, we just announced a tour um, at the end of August, as well as a record release show September 23rd. Um, but I'm always, Instagram is like my kind of, that's where I'm, I'm usually there. <laughs> I'm usually there. And my dog Super is usually there too. <laughs> I just wanna say happy Pride Month to everyone and happy Pride year and life and world to everyone um and i'm sending you so much love and no matter literally no matter what you're not alone it's actually a fact Thanks for watching. Pride is a production of Straw Hut Media. If you like the show, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Pride, and tune in weekly for new episodes. Be sure to share this episode with your friends and subscribe to our podcast too. You can follow Pride everywhere at Pride. It's that easy. Pride is produced by me, Levi Chambers, Maggie Bowles, Ryan Tillotson, and Caitlin McDaniel. Edited by Sebastian Alcala and Daniel Ferreira. Sound mixing by Sebastian Alcala. I love that. There was actually a moment where you said, I think you said like pride is life. And I was like, and that's the title of this episode. Pride is life. <laughs> Amazing. Pride is life. Straw Hut Media.